Hey YouTube people, today we are taking a look at the new 2022 G14. Uh, this is the 6700S version with the 6800HS CPU. And this is the previous model, the 2021 3060 GPU with 5900HS. And uh, just to explain what we're going to be doing here is we're actually going to be running uh, these two machines in both of their performance modes in both uh, silent performance turbo and then we may play with some manual tricks uh, but uh, I want to show you what the wattage is on the GPU and what the performance looks like between these two devices now for those of you that are impatient uh, and just want to see some scores here is the out-of-the-box graphics and CPU score that I have uh, on the new G14 with the 6700S, which from what I can tell that uh, is a pretty good, pretty close uh, graphics and CPU score. So with that out of the way, uh, we can go ahead and look a little bit more in depth because this is advertised with a 100 watt GPU uh, with Smart Shift, and this one I think was uh, I, th I think it was 65 and then 15 extra watts up to 80. So I thought it'd be interesting to watch these two go through some some uh, stress tests and see a uh, how many watts they're able to continuously pull and what the temperatures rise to. Now you can see as they're just idling here, both of these are fairly close in terms of temperatures. I've seen them uh, kind of trade temps uh, around 60 and we're both set to the performance mode. Mux switch is on on this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to load up Furmark on each of these and we're going to run that GPU stress test. And on the screen you're going to be able to see uh, the temperature and the watts that each GPU pulls. So let's go ahead and take a look. And we'll start these at the same time so everything's pretty much fair. Okay, right off the bat you're seeing 100 watts on the GPU while this is hitting 65. Uh, the CPU is pulling 18 watts and 20 over there. So a little more power efficient here, although they could just be kind of idling at different clock speeds. Who knows how they've kind of tuned these devices. We've already dropped down from 100 watts to uh, about 89, 65 watts over here. Uh, temperatures, this is only at 60 degrees on the GPU. Keep in mind it's NVIDIA and this is AMD. This GPU is at uh, 83 degrees and I'm going to make that just a little bit bigger for uh, so we can see that a little more clearly. Okay, that's a little better. Uh, so yeah, 74, 75 watts, continuous load at 86 degrees, 67 at 70 degrees. And keep in mind, this is in performance mode. And at this point, things have really evened out a little bit between the two devices in terms of wattage. Um, but the other thing to keep in mind is this is running 186 frames per second, where this is only running at 136 frames per second. So kind of interesting results. This is slowly ramping up to get warm. This got very warm up to 85 and has kind of sat there uh, here on out. And now we're seeing the 2021 version slow to about 67 watts. Keep in mind this is not necessarily the best indicator of performance necessarily 
However, we can see what the thermal constraints of the device are, how many watts it can push. And now this has fallen down to about 64 watts over here and about 65 to 70 watts over here. But this still has a higher frame rate, 171 versus 136. So let's go ahead and for fun, I'm going to drop us into turbo on each of these. So we're going to switch to turbo mode. And we're going to go back to Fermark so we can see what that did. You can see bringing it up into turbo mode has given the GPU new life. It is now up at 86 watts on this uh, machine over 205 frames a second over here we're still at the 136 and it has now crashed on us very interesting <laughs> okay so th though that didn't look great for the 2022 version uh, however for mark is not the best indicator it's a synthetic benchmark it kind of tends to overload things and that's what that warning is about um, however let me just show you these settings because they're different than the uh, previous gen just because these are both AMD now we're in the manual settings in Armory Crate and what this slider does is this adjusts the wattage available to the CPU. Now this can be useful because you can actually, if you want to dedicate more power to your GPU, you can move this slider down and limit uh, the CPU to something. If you know you're in a game that's not CPU dependent, you can lower this thing to you know, 25, 30 watts and dedicate more power into your graphics card um, rather than having the CPU suck up a lot of that power. So you can kind of manually control the smart shift using these sliders. Now also, if you were in a situation like we were and you noticed, hey, in this application, my computer is crashing because <laughs> it got too hot or it's pulling too much power, who knows? Maybe it's just not stable. Brand new device just came out. There's probably some tweaks that need to happen to the the driver and BIOS, but if I wanted to say, hey, I'm not going to let it have that full 115 watts of power, and that's between the CPU and GPU, you can actually move this slider down. Uh, you know, say I only want this computer to use 80 watts. Boom, you're there. Uh, you've now tuned your device down to 80 watts. Uh, on NVIDIA graphics cards, you're able to tweak the GPUs. You can undervolt them. You can um, you know, tweak the, the voltage curve. You can do all sorts of things with them. Not here. The 6700S and 6800M don't really have any features that would let you do that. But what you can do is tune in how much power you want them to use. That gives you an acceptable level of performance, noise, and power consumption. So if you said, hey, I only want this, this to use uh, 40 watts, you could have it be a 40 watt computer. So now you probably don't want to do that because it should be capable of running full power, uh, especially if you have the fan speed cranked up here. Uh, but anyways, let's go, just wanted to note that, but let's go back to the turbo and we're going to do that for both machines here. And rather than run Furmark, I'm going to show you a real world gaming benchmark and we can get a fill for the performance between 2021 and 2022's G14. So these are both set to the same settings, uh, 1080p standard quality. Let's go ahead and press start. So you can definitely see that the 2022 version has more uh, CPU, although it's pretty close, but uh, it's pulling 90 watts where that was stuck on 30, 90 versus, yeah, this is really capping out over here. 
you can see that this CPU is using 35 watts, where that's using 40, but this is a more power efficient CPU. And all that, that extra wattage going to the GPU is going to translate into better performance, and you can already see it. Uh, we're already at 1,000, where that was at 600-ish. So let, we'll see what the end score is between these two. But uh, it's definitely looking good for the 2022 uh, G14. And keep in mind, this is the 6700S. Uh, now, let's talk about that for a minute while you watch this benchmark happen. Uh, 6700S versus 6800S. One's got a 105 uh, TGP, and the other one has a 100 TGP. Um, and one has, you know, a 6900HS versus 6800HS. In my benchmark and also in Time Spy, what we're seeing is that 6800S is good for maybe 5-10% better than the 6700S. So maybe 5-10% to better is worth the extra, how much is it, 2 to. $200, $250 that you're going to pay extra for uh, in the U.S. at Best Buy. Uh, but it's very close. I mean, 5 to 10% performance. This 6700S is pretty substantial. Um, and you can see, if you look at our frame rate, 35 versus 27 over here. These are both in turbo mode. Keep that in mind. So we're giving it our absolute best shot at this. So also while this benchmark is running, I have been keeping benchmark tabs on lots of different devices in this particular 1080p benchmark at standard quality. And I just wanted to put it out there that even the X13 with the XG Mobile 3080, um, I've been able to basically tune down the CPU, allowing the graphics to have more power and get within a few percentage points of that 3080 XG Mobile in the exact same test. Um, that is the XG Mobile at stock. If I overclock the XG Mobile, it goes quite a bit higher. Um, but still, it's in good company. And you can see that it really is performing at a good click better than the previous version. Now, there's lots of different benchmarks, and they're always going to perform a little bit differently. But, um, I mean, we'll, we'll wait till we get the score here. But this thing is performing very close to the 3070G15 from last year. Uh, you know almost pretty much on par. So you're dealing with a lot of power, even on the 6700S version here. Um, it's, it's no joke. I mean, it's not, it's not the ultra like top gaming laptop, but it's freaking 14 inches, you know? So um, really compelling. The other thing I wanted to talk about while we're letting this benchmark run is uh, the screen on this thing looks amazing. It is super bright. Um, the, there's very little, little ghosting. It almost feels like you can reach right into the panel. Um, so I was really impressed with the display on here. And I like the 16-10 aspect ratio. Way better than 16-9. But, uh, you know, you do get bars and content like this that's 1080p. But that's not a big deal to me. Anyways, um, let's also talk a little bit about what's going on here. This this GPU is kind of fading a little bit. It's hanging out at around 55 watts. The CPU is at 34. This is still up at 70 watts. So on average, we're seeing, you know, anywhere from 20 to 25 more watts on this 2022 model. That vapor chamber inside there is doing something uh, substantial here. And uh, if you look at the CPU temperature. It's very hot over here. We're at 96, where it's at 86 over there. So um, that's definitely a consideration. Uh, the, 
again, this is NVIDIA GPU. This is an AMD GPU. It's hard to compare thermistors between them. Uh, so, you know, as long as it's running and the temperature is in good range, you're, you're probably okay. The other thing that's going on here a little bit is I have not tilted the screen up to lift this up off the table as much as I could have just to facilitate the camera angles where on this one it's lifted a little bit more uh, right off the bat just because of the unevenness of the table that's sitting on it might be getting a little more fresh air but our benchmark has completed uh, you can see it finished quite a bit early on the 2022 version and here's our difference 9860 over 7449 That, my friends, is a 32.3% performance lead on the 2022 version. So that is pretty decent. Um, I'm really happy with this machine. It looks great. Um, I'll probably do some more videos on, on just reviewing the unit itself. But this is, and this is even just the 6700S. Like I say, you could get 5, 10% more performance out of that 6800S, but um, right now you can only get the 6700S in the US. So if you're on the fence about it, just keep in mind, it's only five to 10% difference performance. So uh, do what you wanna do, but you're not missing out on a whole lot by picking up this Advantage Edition. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching. We'll have a lot more content regarding the 2022 G14 gaming laptop in the future. We'll see you next time.